and welcome back to the Cracking Kai YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 1186, maximum subarray sum with one deletion. Given an array of integers, return the maximum sum for a non-empty subarray with at most one element deletion. So, in other words, you want to choose a subarray and optionally delete one element from it so that there is at least one element left and the sum of the remaining elements is uh, the maximum possible. Note that the subarray needs to be non-empty after deleting one element. All right, pretty straightforward. We have already solved on this channel the maximum subarray problem, so hopefully this one isn't too much of an extension. Now, let's look at uh, an example here. So we have this input 1, minus 2, 0, 3. And, um, you know, if we were to sum up the subarray, what would we get? Or sorry, the entire array? Well, minus 1, uh, 1 plus uh, minus 2, that's minus 1, plus 0, still minus 1, plus 3, uh, is going to be 2. So obviously, adding all the elements uh, doesn't work. We need to get rid of 1. Uh, and in this case, obviously, we want to just delete the negative 1, uh, which is minus 2 in this case, and, you know, the sum would just be 4. So we use our 1 deletion on the negative. Cool. But what happens if there's actually two negatives? We can only delete one of them. And in this case uh, here, uh, where we have 1, minus 2, minus 2, and 3, uh, they're actually the same value. Obviously, you'd want to take the smaller one um, if you have a choice, but sometimes you don't. So what do we want to do here? Well, we don't want to sum anything because we don't want to really sum one of these minuses. Remember that we can take any subarray here, which as long as it's non-empty, we also don't need to delete an element. We can just say, I'm going to take three, and that's it. So we just take three uh, because that's the maximum value. So we have a choice. We don't have to delete something if we don't want to. For example, if all of them are, um, you know, right, we're, we only optionally have to do one. So if they're all positive, you would just sum uh, the, the subarray. So the way that we want to approach this is very similar to how we solved the maximum subarray problem, where we essentially just keep track of the sum. And at certain conditions, we want to actually ask ourselves, does it make sense to add uh, more variables to our sum or do we actually just want to start over? Now, I don't want to get too much into the explanation because we're actually going to do this in the code editor. This one's a really fast problem. No need to kind of go through examples line by line. It's just a waste of time. Let's do it in the code editor. It's about 15 lines of code and I will walk you through it as we go through. So I will see you momentarily in the code editor in three, two, one. We are in the code editor, let's type this up. So we're gonna want a few variable here and I'm gonna define them and explain to you what they are. So we're gonna say the sum with a skip and this one's pretty straightforward, right? This is the sum of our current subarray that we're considering, um, w assuming that we've skipped one element. So pretty straightforward. Uh, then we're going to have a sum except we haven't skipped anything. This would just be the direct sum of whatever the current subarray we're considering is, um, all the elements added together. We haven't taken anything. So we're gonna say sum, no skip. And we're also gonna need to return a result here. So all of this is just going to equal to the first element in the array. Remember that uh, you need to have at least one element in your subarray. So we're just gonna set it equal to the first element and then we'll process the rest of the elements from there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to loop through our elements. So for num in array of oops, uh, one uh, forward. So obviously we've just processed the zeroth index. There's no reason to process it again. So we're going to start our iteration at the first index. And what we want to do now is we want to ask ourselves, is our sum uh, with skip, is it less than zero? Now, the reason that we want to ask ourselves this is because if your numbers are already significantly below zero, it doesn't really make sense to add numbers to try to bring it above zero. So for example, if our numbers were like minus 100, minus 200, and then 40, sure, we could skip, you know, minus 200, and you know, our sum would be minus 100, then we add the 40 and you know, whatever's left in the array, but then we'd be at minus 60. And actually, we can just say, oh, I don't need the rest of this array. It's already gone negative. I can't do anything with it. So I'm just going to consider the 40 onwards. So what we can do is we're going to say if um, if our sum with skip, so if we've already used our skip and we're below zero, 
then we've taken too many negatives that we really shouldn't. We should just consider the first positive that we get, and that will be where we want to start. So we're just going to reset our skip, uh, sorry, not our skip, our um, sum with skip. We're just going to reset it to zero because, you know, we don't need the number, right? So now what we want to do is there's two cases, right? The number can either be greater than or equal to zero, or it can be less than zero. So if the number that we're currently processing is a positive, so greater than or equal to zero, then we want to take it. There's no reason to skip it. Adding it will only increase our sum, so there's no reason to skip it. Ideally, we only skip negatives, or if there's only positives, then actually we wouldn't want to skip anything at all because there's no reason to. So if it's positive then we always take it so we're gonna say the scum with skip we're we're not gonna skip it we're just gonna take the number um, so we're gonna add the current number to the sum with the skip otherwise we need to make a decision do we want to take this number uh, take the hit of taking this number so for example maybe the number is minus one and that's not really gonna affect our sum too much so we can take the hit or we want to compare well let's just see what we're gonna do so we're going to say that the sum uh, with skip is either going to be the maximum of sum, the current sum with skip if we just take the hit and add the number to our sum or remember that sum no skip represents the sum of our subarray up until our current point assuming we haven't skipped anything if that value is actually bigger than um, you know us taking the hit on the number, then that will become our new um, sum with skip, right? So we just want to set it to the other one and we're going to ignore this current number. Maybe the current number is like minus 10,000 and it would mess up our sum. So we actually want to take the maximum of taking the hit with the num in the case that it's negative. Well, actually in this case it is negative because we're in this else block um, or, you know, we're just going to skip it. So in which case the sum with the skip, obviously we've now just taken a skip um, in that case. So that's why we have to do the sum with the no skip. Now what we want to do is actually similar uh, to what we did up here with the sum with skip. We actually want to check whether or not um, if sum no skip is less than zero, um, then we just want to reset it as well. Because again, it may just be easier to start our sum from the current number uh, than it would be to um, just try to add more to it. So we're going to say sum no skip uh, is going to equal to zero. And now you might be asking yourself, why didn't we do this earlier up here? You know, why have you left it after you processed the current number? And the reason for that is actually this statement here. Now you see that we use sum no skip here. If in fact we actually overrid the value of sum no skip and set it to zero, then when we tried to use it in this function uh, in this else block here it would be pointing to zero if we overrid it which is not correct because we want to hold the old sum no skip now we could get around this by de uh, declaring a variable like sum no skip temporary but that's just a waste there's no nothing obligating us to do it earlier so we just do it afterwards so we have access to this um, sum no skip so if you, in case you're wondering why we do it down here and not up here with the other one that's why, because the order actually will matter here. Otherwise, um, we need to add the number to our sum no skip, uh, sum no skip, because obviously we don't skip any numbers with this sum, we just add everything to it. And now, now that we have all of our variables updated, we can actually take a, um, a maximum uh, to see uh, if we have a new uh, best answer. So we're gonna take the maximum, whatever our current result is, uh, whatever sum no skip is, sorry, sum no skip, can't really see my keyboard, uh, and then sum with skip. So those are our three variables, and we want to take the maximum of them at each iteration through the loop to figure out which one we want to use. And the last thing, once the loop ends, we simply return res, and we are good to go. So let me run this, make sure I didn't make any stupid syntax mistakes, as sometimes I do with these live recordings, and it looks like accepted. Perfect. So time and space complexity. This one is really easy. Obviously, all we're doing is we are passing through our array here uh, from left to right, processing all of the elements. All of our checks here are going to be constant time checks. You know, we, we're just comparing against zero. We're doing an addition. 
Uh, we have an if else block. Nothing here um, is anything but constant uh, time. So our time complexity is going to be big O of n. Uh, we have n elements. We perform um, you know, a big O of one operation for each n element. That's big O of n. Uh, for the space complexity, um, we don't have any extra variables here. We have um, just these three, which are just holding numbers. Um, because of this, we don't declare any extra data structures. So we can consider our uh, space complexity to be big O of 1. Okay, so that is how you solve maximum subarray sum with one deletion. Like I said, it's really similar to the previous iteration of this problem, just maximum subarray sum, where you're not allowed to delete an element. This one is quite good practice for Cadane's algorithm. Sometimes you will get this um, one deletion one as a follow-up if you get the, the standard version. So it's good to know how to do it. And again, look at how simple this code is. It's like less than 20 lines, right? Once you get rid of this stuff here. So nothing too complicated. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it um, helpful. If you did, why not leave a like and a comment on uh, the channel? It really helps me out uh, to grow. Hopefully I'll get to 10,000 subs soon. And um, yeah, if you want to join a Discord community where we talk about all things interview prep, you can ask for referrals, you can ask me random questions, um, then I will leave a link in the description below if that sounds interesting for you. Otherwise, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.